Tom Vassell's Top 100 Games of All Time. Mike Delicio, bravissimo, sporadically bored, but never pianissimo. C-R-C, voice of the people. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Tom Vassell. I'm Mike Delicio. I'm Z Garcia. And the voice of the people is... The people's champion, Roy Kennedy. Let's go. For the last time. Ah, uh, well, that's a shame. You know. What? You're not the, the emperor. Whoa. We're, this will be the last time you face the, uh, the people's champion in combat, so I hope you're prepared. I am not. Is there fighting happening? I can go out to my car. The people's <laughs> list will wreck you there. every you to, single time. Blade. We need to defend... Mm -hmm. Our choices and a pugilistic method. Oh. Is pugilistic a word? Oh, it's a word. It is now, I guess. No, it's a, no, yeah, it's and a it word. was both. It's I think word, word correct, uh, used correctly as well. Yeah. Hmm. You're sh you 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 brought the strength today. <laughs> <laughs> He's ready wow. for All right. Well, we fire. are at numbers. 20 through 11. But before we get to our numbers, we want to mm. say thank you to some of our Kickstarter backers. Mm -hmm. We want to say thanks to Jorge and Roberto from Back to the Table. Muchas gracias. Mm. Grimoire Games and Mini Steel. Grimoire, probably, right? Grimoire? It's G R E M O R E. No, you're probably right then. Okay. Never doubt my pronunciation. Well, look, <laughs> if you're going to get pugilistic about it. Vincent. Sorry. Vincent and Mariah <laughs> Groffman. Now I've got now a questioning see, every word he does. This one actually, they, they gave me the pronunciation, oh, so there's that. Spelled, huh? Eric Hilsheim, Eric Fontaine from Montreal, Okay. Daniel Weitzman, Weitzman and Mr. M. Dudley. Oh, wait, and last, Stratego's Games. All right. Cheerio. Thank you so much, everybody. And you're like, how do I get one of these shout outs? That's a great question, Tom. Go to dicetowerkickstart.com. We are down to. Uh, 36 hours right wow. now. If you want Tom to mispronounce your name as well. <laughs> that's correct. Join Come on, in. Boy, that's not the way to sell it. That's the gift that keeps on giving. It's not is. extra, though. You can't really put a price on that. We've tried, but you can't really put a price on that. <laughs> All right, did I say 21 through 20? It's 21 through 20 through 11. Oh, I better change my list. <gasps> 20 21 through, through 20 would be a much shorter video. <laughs> Next year for our top 100, we'll do one game a day. Wow. We're, We're going to like actually like deep we'll, we'll, dive yeah, into we'll, each game. We'll, we'll be done in August. We'll have to know? stretch. This is one of my favorite worker placement games. More. And. Come on. <laughs> Just play each game. Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. <laughs> okay, we'll be done in 2024. There you go. We'll All right. That. Well, we're going to get started with number 20. Ooh. All right, number 20, we're getting into the uh, the numbers that people tend to start caring about. Am I right? Before this, really. You might be right about that one thing. Mm. The niceness is done. All right, oh, so okay. I, 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 I like paid my penance. Tell you what, I mean. To this foul creature of the darkness. Oh, oh my goodness I, me, he really swings the other way. <laughs> I never know what to expect. They call him Pendulum Vassal for a reason. I fellas. vacillate. You do <laughs> vacillate. That's the second big word he's dropping to do it today. Correctly used. He Again. A, he is a pugilist. Vacillating between two things. Right. Tom, color me bewildered. Mm. You pugilistic vacillator. Give me a marker. <laughs> what All color right. is it gonna be? My number 20 is a game that uh, has dropped a little bit, and I suspect, honestly, it may drop a little bit more just uh -oh. because I haven't played it as much, although it did come out with a recent uh, expansion. My number 20 is Rise of Tribes, which is a, a game that is really, it's just above a welcoming game. Just okay. mm. so, so this is one of those games where when somebody asks, you know, I've played Catan, yeah. you know what I mean, and, and, and maybe what are some next steps. This is one of the games I actually consider for a next step from Catan because it's going to have some things that are going to feel familiar, you know, kind of the hex-based map and, and things along those lines. Some dice rolling, although the dice work much differently in this game than they would in something like Catan. But uh, I know Tom doesn't like doesn't uh, his looks. He's been trying to hold his looks back a little bit. You're not as fond of this game as I am. But um, The other day, I was looking for games to replace in a dice stat. You almost took the side. And I got to Rise of Tribes, and I thought... 
Oh, there's a few people who like it. Yeah, yeah, I do like it. And I like teaching this to people, especially, again, this is for people probably that are a little bit newer to the hobby or just really like lighter games. Because it's a mm. very light game that, you know, has a, a mm. civilization kind of a theme. Not really a civ theme. More like a building up of your early tribe theme. I like that um, theme. Pre I do, too. Prehistory theme. Yeah, it's like a prehistory theme. And, again, it has a, a, a nice little dice uh, mechanic that, that you choose your, your actions based on either having a sun or a moon, you'll have a stronger version of that action. You know, that's what's on the dice, basically. Suns, moons, or nothing. So Really cool. Yeah, I like it. Tom is not impressed. He's a little pugilistic about it. <laughs> but no, I like my I've own. never hit anyone over a game in my life that I can recall. Maybe tell you what, you could hit me. The, there's some pretty chunky wooden bits in this. You can, you can cause some damage. Only if you get the one version. Yeah. The non Kickstarter version components are not nearly as good. Oh, this is really? a big difference. Well, there is, but you could get the the, the nice version in retail. I actually, in, in Walmart, they were selling them. For, you know, the version in the library is not the nice version. That's a piece of trash, and you need to throw it away. <laughs> Done. <laughs> I'll replace it with the good version. He fell into my trap. No, I noticed. <laughs> you played him like a fiddle. Uh huh. All right, my number 20, Rise of Tribes. My number 20 is certainly a heavier game. Um,. That uh, because I saw a comment a little bit, a bit ago that somebody said, like, over and under on Katala game showing up. <laughs> well, wait no more, my mm. friends. My number 20 is Yamatai, Ooh. which was 25 last year, 24 the year before that, so basically the same spot. Yamatai is one that I, uh, I wasn't sure how I was going to feel about it. I actually had to play this as an early prototype -y kind of game. Mm. And I thought, oh, this is neat. This is interesting. It's It's... It's kind of thinky. I'm not sure how I feel about it. I don't think it's going to come uh, anywhere near five tribes for me because I, I already enjoyed that very much. But this is a very solid Euro-style game that brings to the table a lot of things I tend to like anyway. This idea of taking a power and using that as your power for the turn, but it itself denoting your place in turn order next round. You take a really good ability now, you are near uh, last or last next round. And then characters you can hire, and they will give you an ability for the rest of the game, changing something up. And I definitely like that part mm. and the way it behaves more than in Five Tribes. In Five Tribes, a lot of the characters, these gen genies or gents that you acquire, need to continue to be powered up. Mm -hmm. you got to keep feeding them. In this one, if you have them, they work. That's it. And there are all sorts of wild, unique abilities that no one else is going to have access to. I love when a Euro game can bring that to the table. Mm. You know, it's not just, can I outthink you, but, haha, -ha, I have powers you'll never have. And that just feels cool. So, Yamata gives me that feeling, and the thinking is coupled with that. Makes for a great combination. And, of course, it's a stunner to look at. Sure. It's Yamata. interesting you both pick games... That were very popular briefly. Yeah. Oh, would, yeah. Yeah, but but they haven't had a lot of, yeah, staying power. There's a couple of people in the chat here that are, like, kind of going along and saying, yes, I like this better than the Five Tribes, but I do think that's very much a minority opinion. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm not even sure it's an opinion Z holds. Um, so, we shall see. Know. My number I can't 20. I if it was on your list already or not. So it was will, not. We will not talk I'm about keeping that. track of that. Got it. My number 20 is the heaviest game on my top 100. It is also the heaviest game on all the top 100s. And that's it's heavier than any other 30 games combined because I need like five of you to help me set this up. Mm. Oh, you mean like physically heavy? Physically heavy. Ah, yes! That's what heavy means! Oh, I know what this is. When I call you... Wait. <laughs> I don't mean you're complex. Roy's no, I should probably pull back. Hang on, let me pull back from this. Pitch car! There we go! Pitch car! <laughs> I'm going to need a minute. Mm -hmm. I... I as I, as I piece together, again, the pieces of my broken heart. Yeah. It's like you piece together a pitch car track. Ah, so exactly. pitch car, it was originally called Carabonde back in the day. and That's when they, the only one I play. I'm old school like that. <laughs> if it's really? just pitch car, I won't touch it. You know, when it first came out with pitch car, the, the Carabonde was the same thing. Mm -hmm. Pitch car came out, the tracks were not the same cut. It was really, everyone was like, it was like a big scandal at the time. Like, <laughs> how dare you? It was a new company. And I think there was something like the... They, the, the new machinery or whatever okay. <laughs> it was That's it was pretty, pretty funny. funny at the time so I was doing all these things to 
have the tracks come off one to the other. But that uh, w rain damage to my in my garage took care of that problem. Oh, yeah, you remember yeah, that? Yeah. Is it I, even worth playing pitch car without the loop de loop? I mean, this track looks. I can't believe it. Yeah, you know, I, <laughs> I like the loop de loop, but yes, it's very much worth it playing without it. The loop yeah. is something I don't even do half the time because it's so hard to get it, it through. It is really yeah, hard yes. to get through. Yeah, this game just works really well. It it has more players than any game on my list because mm. I played this with 40 people. Yeah. It does require, if you're going to play with that many people, you do want somebody Moderating. moving the game. Yeah, yeah. It's very much so. And you don't want somebody who is not watching the game and drinking and talking to someone else, <laughs> and you have to call her name every time, Ellen, uh, at the game because you know, it slows ooh. the whole game down. Oof. That was just a random name. Wow. Called out. Wow. Pitch car, my number 20. <laughs> it's a fun one. Um, the People's 20. Mm. Uh, honestly, going here on out, you're going to see a lot of familiar names. But this is a game that uh, has only been on the list for two years, but I don't think it's going anywhere. This is not a flash in the pan. This is The Crew. Flash in the pan. <laughs> this is a trick-taking game. What was it last year? Cooperative. It was 13 last year, so it's gone down. Oh, a little dropping bit. like oh, a stone. Cool. <laughs> it's still <laughs> in year, the top off 20. The list. No, that's because the other one's on the list. They're going to pass, Mike. Well, it's going to pass all right. Anyway, the crew this is a great stuff, Mike. cooperative game. The best pass. thing, the thing I like most about the crew is the theme. But other than sure. that... Um, <laughs> you like the crew, actually. I actually really like the crew. I don't like trick-taking games at all. Space. Yeah. I'm just kidding. But uh, I don't like trick-taking games at all. So but the fact that like this is very, like, you have like that headspace you have to get in of like, okay, I'm going to put this little clue out, and that little clue can mean a ton to the group. You're not allowed to do regular communication. Yeah. You're trying to figure that out, and then you have the one spoiler that you're always playing with. It's like, you messed it up again. It's just a blast to play, and it's really quick, and it's a lot of fun. That uh, happened one time! It's enough for you to never live that down. Yeah. How many times did Ellen forget? <laughs> that happened once. Well, not like 20 times. No, actually. one game. Uh, That's enough. Uh, you see how that works? Uh, mm. I'm learning lessons. Welcome to life, Be kid. meaner. <laughs> Be meaner. Then the pain when it comes back to me doesn't hurt as much. Mm. That's that. You've understood everything about that lesson. But the crew is a blast to play, and that's why it's the <laughs> people's number 20. All right, so from my number 20 being a, a very light game mm -hmm. to my number 19 being on the other end of the spectrum. This is Pitch car. No, heavy as far as complexity. Okay. Like Z. Right. He's a complex uh, guy. He is. He's, he's deep. He's complex. He's, uh, he's an enigma. He's going to hit me soon. He's an enigma. <laughs> Calm down. All right. He's a mystery wrapped in a riddle, this Z Garcia. Hmm. Just when I, you think you've got I'll, to figure it I'll out. I'll stroke my beard and, and achieve calmness there and serenity. Go. Yes. It's called Zen. <laughs> <laughs> my number 19 oh, is Pax Premier Second Edition. Oh, here we go. A, Mike did not teach this to us this past year, by the way. He refuses to. You know, we this asked is, him politely. This is so interesting. Mike doesn't teach this people a lot of games. This is so interesting how, how Roy accuses me of not of going out of my way to not teach him uh, yeah. Raiders of the, of the North Sea. You're... I have offered We're rewriting history multi, yeah. thematic. We Revisionist had, history. We've had two days and you still haven't taught it to me. History is written by the victors. I win. You all lie. Pax Premier Second Edition is a fantastic, um, but very hard to explain. So I'm not going to try to to go into a lot of detail. But it's a game of alliances where you are at any given point allied to one of three factions that are represented on this lovely cloth mat by different uh, pieces. If they're lying down, they're a road. If they're standing up, they're a troop. And mm. you are playing cards in front of you that match up with one of your alliances. So if you are allied with the Afghans, you have to have Afghan cards in front of you. And if you switch your alliances mid-game, you lose those cards. Then don't mm -hmm. switch your alliance. Then you might lose. So it's a game that is that is very much always in flux. It is something that that uh, has different win conditions. And, and it's a, a, a design by Cole Worley, who did Root and, and Oath, and um, mm -hmm. has, has a very particular design aesthetic that is very, very impressive but can be hard to to teach and learn yeah. um but i do look forward to playing this with you guys i know we've talked about no, doing hard that. pass Mike, hard my pass. number 19 <laughs> pax premier second edition and a gorgeous production my number 19 has been on my list for a long time and it's usually hovering around the spot but i think it's been as high as 
number two. Not in the last couple of years. It was 19 last time and then 15 before that. But it's one of those games I get associated with around here a lot. Niroshima Hex is yes. my 19. I think uh, in your life it was one you said once? Point? It might have been two. two oh, okay. Number two, I think. Uh, Niroshima Hex is a very tactical game in which you are in a post-apocalyptic world light, uh, lighting, <laughs> lining up units so that they may take each other out, you know, shoot each other away or whatever. Or light them up. Light them up. Uh, the game fire. is an interesting mix, for me anyway, in my head, of an abstract game. It clearly looks abstract, behaves that way. But with a nice touch of theme, uh, if I choose to sort of invest mental energy into that. And I often do, because I like this world. Um, it's got a neat cadence of setting up a battle, because not every unit you put out immediately does something. There's a lot of programming in this, right? You, you put one out that's pointing at that guy I want to take out. And that's yeah. all I do. And then on your turn, you put out a faster unit pointing at the dude I just put out. Meaning, mm. he'll get taken out before he ever goes. Oh. And so you're messing, you're massaging this puzzle until a battle finally triggers. And then it just all breaks loose. And blah, 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 blah. And wipe out half the board. And then you do it again. There's a few battles each game. You're trying to take out your opponent's headquarters. That's the game. There's a ton of armies. They all have their own little flavor, their own little twists. I really like this. This is... Uh, I don't know what it is about it. It just feels, I've, I've said before, like a knife fight in a phone booth kind of feel. Hmm. And, you know, it immediately is like, and all the fighting and all that. But then that thinkiness of, hmm, how do I solve this puzzle right now presented to me. I like is, that a lot. Is the sequel... Sequel? The uh, the other one. He made a newer one a few years ago. Oh, the bad, bad... Uh, what's the fantasy one? Monolith Arena. Monolith Arena, thank yeah. you. The yes. fact that I'm assuming... I don't... The spoiler that that's not on your list. No, no. They're too, they're too close. They are really the same game. And he... Did that one ever go anywhere or is that kind of fading out? He still, I think, put out a new... There's like two or three extra armies for it. Mm. Uh, I think one came out not that long ago, but I don't think it's gone anywhere near this. Mm. And there was too much back catalog, back catalog for me to switch. That one's got a better production. Yes. Mm. Yeah, but this has, this is like 18 extra armies deep mm. now, you know. This is too much. Alrighty, uh, my number... 19 was 9 last year. Mm. So dropping like a stone. That's right. <laughs> no, I again, some of what I did was what you did. Um mm -hmm. where, where you you sorted them out when it came out I was like, "Oh, it's 19 instead of 9." Right. And also, there were a lot of games as I did the sorting program, I said definitely top 10, definitely top 10, and they ended up in my top 20 instead. Right, right. Because there's that many good games. Anyway, this game is also one I've been arguing with somebody in the comments from one of these videos where they said this is a medium weight game. It is not. It is a heavy game, and that is Feast for Odin. Oh, oh, this is wow. not a medium weight game. A medium wow. weight game. Huh? <laughs> if, if you think this is medium weight, that, that's legit. That just means that you are a heavy gamer. Yeah, right. right. It's medium to you only. Correct. Now, when you say heavy gamer, yeah, are you talking... Complex. Okay. <laughs> that's what I've meant the whole time, except for when I talked about pitch car. Mm. And only pitch car. Okay, mm. good. We understand each other. Feast when I say Odin heavy is, lies the crown, I mean complexity. Feast for Odin is, Odin is heavy as well. Yeah, it really is. I, I, <laughs> and and, and is. complex, yes. Yeah, and I really like this game. I like worker placements, and I like tons of options. I don't know that I realized this was this high on your list. Like, I have it on my top 100, but yeah, I this one it was this, this high. This one grew on me more. The polyomino thing is... The end game, but it's not that. It's about the options, and I like every time I play Feast mm. Road, and I go, this time I'm going to do some hunting. Right. This time I'm going to do cows. Yeah. You know, I, I pick one thing. It does not. There are some imperfections about the game. It, it takes forever to set up, and the cards to me are boring compared to his cards in every other game. Mm -hmm. The cards are like, ah, oh, do this minor thing and get a point yeah, or yeah, two. Yeah, I, 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 I think it's... because of the number of interaction points and things that you interact with in this game, you couldn't make the cards that crazy. I get it, you know I get I mean? it. And I, again, I just I just wish they were more exciting. But yeah. it doesn't matter because that 
board is just so huge and fun and interesting. So I really like Feast for Odin. Um, it's one that, you know, it's a it's a teach for mm -hmm. sure. I can teach it, but it's a yeah. it's a teach to pull out. But man, it gives me that really good satisfaction when the game's over. Also, it's a game I've gotten better at. Yeah. I still remember the first time I was like, I didn't even fill up half my thing. Yeah. Now I'm I'm if I play now, I will fill my board almost completely. Yeah. Because I just learned how to do it. But it is a it's a learning step to get to that point. It is. Awesome. The uh, no, it's not. <laughs> I know. I. It's funny. The chat. The chat said I look sleepy. I'm like, I haven't played your game. I haven't played your game. I haven't played your game. I'm like, ah. No, I, I need to play all these awesome games as a, as a I comma. Don't know if I want to play your game. I probably don't want to play Feast for I definitely want to play Nourishima Neur Hex. So yeah, yeah, but if you play Nourishima Hex, play it on the app. Really? Play with me. I'll play it with you. I'm wreck you like Ralph. You fell into his trap. There's too many traps being laid today. It's a minefield. I'll That's, teach you. Teach me. Teach yeah. me. Teach Roy's me. trying to say he will wreck you. Anyway, he probably will. speaking <laughs> along those lines, this next game I haven't played, but it has been on the list for seven years. It is a Euro game um, that started at 64 in 2015, and then it went up to 60, and it's just continued to kind of go up. It's got fluxed a little bit, but it's number is it 19 flux? now. No. <laughs> flux is not a Euro game. You don't know that. The cubes, the flux, cubes the and flux. Game, though, Star Trek cube. flux. This is a game with, uh, I guess, awesome like action action cards. This is Concordia. Mm. Big oh, hero game. I know okay, a lot of people okay. really like this, and it's it's number nineteen, so it's like way up there on the people's choice, and it's stuck around. It has staying power. I feel like this is a game that has gotten more popular. Than right. Than it has. Yeah. Right? This was a slow rise. Very much a slow burn. It was a little game. bit of a sleeper at the beginning, and has now become popular. I mean, obviously, when you first saw the cover, of course, everyone was rushing to buy it just based exactly. off of that. Yeah. But then it took a little while to really get going. And that's uh, the pretty cover, woof, mind you. I know. That was the reprinted cover. Yes. Where they beautified it up. Mm. Honestly, it just has to have solid mechanics, the fact that everybody does, wants yeah. to like, yeah. really get in on this game and play it more and more. So, um, Concordia, People's 19. Very good. I like nice. it. No one cares what you have to think. Oh, we're back. <laughs> My number 18 is a crossover with, with me, me yes. at least. Maybe the people, I don't remember if this has been on the people's choice list or not. I would be surprised if, if it, it is. Wasn't. The people have made a mistake. And if it hasn't yet, then it might be higher. But Wait, My number 18. Me? I don't know that this was on your list. It might be a crossover with you too. I don't remember. Say it. It's got to be this one right here. What is it? Oh, so this one, and then uh, you're just randomly picking a game. It wasn't from this list. He hasn't even given any hits towards what it is. Was it how much earlier? Like a while I don't ago? Know, like yesterday? Just say the name of the game. Everdale, my number eighteen. Oh, dang is it! I Everdale. pointed at it. Okay, yes. Was this on your list also? No, so I like it, but not nearly as much as I you guys. I had two possibilities for what this was. Actually, no kidding. I was thinking Unmatched or Everdell. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah, I like uh, Unmatched quite a bit, uh, but spoilers, it's, it's not on my list. It, it wouldn't be far oh, away. Well, Next, you're going to tell people what happened in the Boba Fett episode. I haven't seen it. He hasn't watched it. No. Everdell is a charming game. Z has talked about it, and, and many of you have likely heard about it. But, eloquently, uh, too. Thank uh, you. Quite eloquently Thank and you. pugilistically as well. Mm. Uh, it is a beautiful game where you are playing as anthropomorphic critters, and you are setting up your, your little... What is it? Is it called your meadow? I know there's a, the, the game meadow that we'll be playing later, but... The meadow is actually the middle of the It's the middle board, part, yeah. yeah. You're building your little city, I think. I guess it's a little town. town or something, uh, yeah. But it's a card-playing game and a worker placement game, and it has, you know, a, a kind of a unique round structure where you may not be in the same season or yeah. round yeah. as somebody else, and, and that maybe takes a little getting used to, but it's a very it's... clever game, a very beautiful game, and uh, one that I enjoy playing, and some good expansions that have come yeah. out for it as yeah. well. So, so fun. Uh, my number eighteen is Everdell. Everdell is a lovely game. Mm -hmm. And my number eighteen is a cooperative game, a very light co-op, but one that I find very charming, I and uh, one that is a crossover with Mike Delicio. Mm, I know what it is. What is it, Mike? Rising Five. How could you possibly oh, wow. know that? Because mm -hmm. you said light co-op. Yeah, you showed it to him, and you both are working together. And this is like, <laughs> Collusion. This is why we partners will. shouldn't sit next to each other. You sit across from each other. No, we're gonna take you down. That's correct. Are we together? Am I with Roy? Sure, why not? You <laughs> get you get sleepy with me over there. After you play this game, do you get one of those little wordle things on your guesses? No. No, nah. you don't. I don't know what nah. you're talking about. It's right. Mastermind. Oh, it's kind yeah. of Mastermind. The whole game is Mastermind. Okay, well, you know what? Let me talk. Um, 
in this one, you're going to be playing Mastermind. But uh -huh. <laughs> no, you're moving. Uh, Mike already talked about it. You're going to be moving characters around, taking actions with them, smacking little alien creatures and collecting energy to then guess, once you have enough energy, to you know try to deduce this Mastermind-like code. You get that solved, you win the whole thing. Like you said, my favorite thing, I think, is the thing you like the best. A cast of characters we all have access to, yeah. as opposed to my guy, who is particularly good at fighting. Therefore, if I play that character, you should stick to fighting, right. mostly. And that can sort of railroad your play of something, right? Mm. This one is... And I'm, I, I'm bewildered. No one's stolen this <laughs> I yet. I know. It's crazy. It's... You can be them all at the same time, so you don't then get stuck being the one who has to draw more cards to mm. feed them to other people. I'm trying to think what game you, you can, can do you that can with move besides around. this one. Yeah, I can't think of any offhand. There, I know does there's Does Beast Odin do it? No. Yeah. No, okay. Got it. Thank <laughs> what? You. Okay, my number, uh, whatever we're on, 18. is Rising 5. And next Ooh. year, it'll be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 23. Because it's... Rising five over. <laughs> I see what you did there. That's a, uh, <laughs> when when they said mastermind for some of you, if this, if you're like just here in 2022, he he means Wordle. You know right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but if you're in 2023, Wordle's probably already a thing of the past. Yeah, sure it is. Back there with the floss. All right. <laughs> My number 18 was 45 last year and 80 the year before that. So it is. Shooting up. Mm. This is Shoots my go-to game. Mm. If I'm at a convention or something and someone says, teach me something new, and it's just the two of us, and we have a short amount of time. That's a lot of qualifiers. Is, <laughs> okay. No, 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 no. But it's a, that is not an uncommon qualifier. I mean, I mean, anywhere. I've done it here in the studio. So there's just two people, and we want to play a short, amazing game. Oh. Blitzkrieg. Yeah, yeah, okay. Got Blitzkrieg. Uh, straight up. Blitzkrieg wow. is... Really a fantastic game. Yeah. I don't care. And it, it doesn't matter if you like war or not, like World oh, War II. I do, I do. <laughs> <laughs> I thought this to people who liked I thought this to your dad who yeah. likes heavy war games yeah. who liked it. And then I thought it to people who don't really like war games and they enjoy it. It's mm -hmm. I it really it's a I like tug of war games in general. Yeah. The, what's the one that you've been really enjoying lately? The uh Oh whoa, Caper? Caper, yeah, well, yeah. Caper, Caper's a tug of war Caper game. Caper Europe yes. is a tug of war game, yeah, right. yeah, especially that one. Caper has other things involved. This is almost all tug of war, mm. but done with special tiles that you put in your bag, which we have one in the uh, in the Kickstarter. It's very exciting. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. I was, I was really excited to get excited. that promo, but yeah. it's just so neat. Yeah, it's it such a fun game. I've not played the sequel. I heard the sequel's really good. What's it called? Caesar. Caesar. Mm -hmm. um, that's not out yet, but and it and it's it's Blitzkrieg is not a looker. No, at all, no. Um, but it is fantastic, and I, I don't think I. This is one of those games I don't think I've taught where the person I played with disliked it. Some people said good, and yeah. some people went and bought it on the spot. I agree. Same thing. Blitzkrieg, great, mm. great game. Nice. So the people's number eighteen is a pick that has been on Tom's list. It's a pick that's been on Z's list. I don't think it's been on Mike's list. So a good wrong. game, then it's wrong. So it's a good game. You guys succeed, Mike. I think you might fail. It, it might be on your list. Maybe I miss misspoke, but it's been on the list every single year. This is Ticket to Ride. Not on my list. Da, 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 da. Oh, my. Yeah, I think you're a little bit cooler. I like Ticket to Ride. I like it. But, but yeah, the game of yeah. collecting tickets. That match and putting centric. them out there, trying to fulfill oh everything. Um, it's just a great, like, family weight game. Uh, Tom turns into an extremely competitive game, apparently. He does. Right. He will slash your tires in this game. And my wife. It's a joint effort, but if you play with mm. both of us, there's a good chance Get we're crushed. slashing each other's tires, and you might have an okay chance yeah. there. Oh, it's the only rough, game rough. that I've ever been in a tournament uh, Oh, really? For, really? Yeah. No, no, Pandemic. You're right. Dang it, you're right. Okay, this is only one of two games <laughs> that I've been in a tournament uh, for at uh, one of the Dice Tower events. And you didn't bring your trophy to show off? And I off, got or? wrecked <laughs> so bad. I was yeah. used to lower player counts mm -hmm. generally, and they were setting five people up at each table. Oh, wow. Five I got the squish. <laughs> I got the old... And I'm like, oh, I can I can walk there, basically. I don't uh, need a train. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, I did terribly. Drop. That's fantastic. That's awesome. Ticket to Ride, a classic. You just said you getting crushed was awesome. <laughs> I heard it. <laughs> it's hilarious. Um, People's 18. All 
All right, my number 17 is a game that is the one of a trilogy. Here we go. I've talked about the other Here two. Oh, so now word. you know. Just say. Sick of trilogy. <laughs> this you know is I mean? my favorite of the trilogy. And um, Empire Strikes Back. Well, that is my favorite of that trilogy. But no, this is Paladins of the West Kingdom. This is the middle one this also. This is the middle one, but it is my favorite. I, I've kind of gone back and forth on... on but Mike's I, I feel, sponsored by Garfield Games. Look, I think all three of these games are legitimately fantastic games. Period. I just I do. do. I'm not going to not put them on my list because they're from the same designer or publisher or even part of the same series. I legitimately think all three I just think it's funny that you feel like you unique. have to defend your choices. Well, I wonder why I feel like I have to defend my choices. <laughs> I would like to find out. I would like to find out. They all three feel very different. That is very true. So it's not like, oh, if you've got one, you don't need the other two. No, they're very different games. Um, this is the heaviest of the three. I feel pretty safe in saying that. It's the heaviest of the three. Just played the expansion. The expansion is, is great, but you don't need it. This base core game is it, it's just great. I mean, it, it is a worker placement game where you are primarily playing on your own board, although there is a central board you'll also interact with, but okay. it has different attributes that you are going to be raising on track. So if you like tracks, it's got that thing. But different actions you take are going to cost, basically, a particular type of attribute and raise you on another one. And like I've mentioned with this company before, the iconography is so solid, so you know just by glancing at your board, okay, I need strength for this, but it's going to raise me in mm -hmm. virtue, mm -hmm. or whatever. And all of these tracks kind of are commingled. Really, really clever game. Um, I love it. Paladins of the West Kingdom. So this is your favorite. You said My favorite of this, so we're of this done trilogy. With trilogies, yeah? We're done with this trilogy. Oh boy. Oh boy. Spoilers. My number 17 is the first game in an eventual trilogy of games. <laughs> <laughs> There's part, no way you could disprove part that. Part 2 and Part 3 do not exist yet. <laughs> you don't know what's coming. No, and, and this is one Mike was not particularly impressed with. I don't remember what you thought of it. Res Arcana is my 17. I like it. Mike's, Mike's alone in this nonsense. Yeah. I like it too. Res Arcana okay. is, like I said, my favorite. Now it's my favorite Tom Lehman game. Um... Oh, well, that's, that's a little insane. I know, no, that's me. I get that. I, I know that he's got mega hits like Race for the Galaxy under his belt, but I don't know. This was so, this was so different from Race for the Galaxy. Mm. Even when that came around, I thought, yes, tremendous, interesting, but a little samey to other games that already exist. You can definitely trace the lines back. They have publicly said that this game was meant to be a Puerto Rico the card game, and eventually. San Juan instead came out, they retooled it, went to space, and that's where you got, you know, Race for the Galaxy. This one feels very distinct, and mm. I like the minimalistic sort of nature of it, in which you have a deck of literally eight cards for the entire game. You'll draft just eight cards, and then you've got your, I don't know, your little character, your little druid, or your whatever it is, you know. Um... Duelist is what that says, not Druid. Anyway, um, so then that character and eight cards, that's all you're going to do. And you'll be collecting resources, you'll be spending them to upgrade things, conquering places of power, trying to make it a ten victory points. That's the whole shebang. It's much, in some ways, much like Dune Imperium, which we talked about. That idea of a lot of little things, but the goal is so small, in theory... That every one point feels like a big deal, right? right? This is the opposite of a point salad. It's like, mm. this gets me two points? That's huge! Two points is like a you know a fifth of my entire goal. Yeah. And yeah, it just it just works for me. Very a lot of logistics. When do I spend this? What do I convert for what? And how do I get there? So my head's down basically the whole game. But so satisfying for me. Yeah, I really like this one. Reza Kana, my seventeen. All right, my number 17 was 22 last year, 26 the year before that, so it's also slowly moving up. This is one of those games, so usually when I teach a game, I'll say I'm teaching a four-player game, yeah. the fifth player comes, I'm like, oh, take my spot, and I'm teaching, and like, but then you don't get to play, and I say, and I mean it, I don't care. But every time I teach this game, I want to be involved, because... I just I love push your luck that much, mm. and this is Quacks of Quedlingburg. Mm. I love this game. It's one of my favorite games to teach, but I always want to play it when I'm teaching it because 
It's just watching people pull something from a bag is not as exciting as actually right. pulling it from the bag yourself. And it's such an easy game to play. Mm -hmm. Both expansions are good. Not necessary, but good. I don't need to play them. I can play the base game. Because the base game, you just change up what the stuff is. Um, are the upgrade bits necessary? Because, uh, yes. um, yeah. How many points do you think the upgrade bits raised this? <laughs> I don't know about that because I upgraded them immediately. I was at first I bought plastic piece off Etsy. I used coin containers. I've never played this without those. This is a pretty bits. big miss on their. I mean, I guess I had to keep the price of the game down. Yeah, yeah. Right. But Too something much. you're pulling from a bag though is it's that's a it tough wear out. But you are doubling the price of the game at For least sure. by getting those bits. Mm -hmm. No, I get that. Yeah. But it's that good of a game. It I would good. do it without even blinking. Yeah. Mm -hmm. This game has such. It, it, my success level. Mm. Z went into it, not wanting to like it. Left, not loving it, but he grudgingly liked it a little. I yeah. liked it okay. I just that's, I get that's my why thing. I just said. <laughs> I have honestly though never thought about it again. So there is that. It's not like it. It didn't make an, that much of an impression. But I thought, yeah. Okay. But that is the worst reaction I've ever had. Was yeah. someone going meh? Yeah. It. Re I didn't teach it to you, did I? Well, then that doesn't count. You don't like this me, game? And I really Chris just it. gave it a thumbs down. Chris is wrong. This game's amazing. I, I like it. it. I like I it. Know, this game I is love extremely it's popular, like... and there's something to that, right? Um, yeah. yeah, I mean, those upgraded bits got worn out, yeah. which I didn't think was possible at Dice Tower West back in 2020. Mm -hmm. It was that popular. We, we had three copies in the library for a while. We still have two. Yeah. I think we need to put a pair of uh, plastic gloves in the box, so everyone has to wear their gloves when they reach in and get those. Sure, gloves. but I don't know why you would put a pair in. Does everyone well, fight yeah, over that pair? Yeah, you just trade out the gloves every time. Oh, oh, it's your yes. turn. Here you go. That's a, that, yes, <laughs> I'd be like, um, not now. Next game, you probably can't do that. <laughs> oh. I don't think you should ever have done that, Mike. Oh, look, you've got your idea of hygiene. I've got mine. <laughs> oh, clearly, <laughs> Quags is awesome. <laughs> Um, so the next game here is another <laughs> extremely popular game. It might be like one of the most popular games out there. Like Maybe if you like go most, I would think. <laughs> no, no, I mean, I mean, like if you go on like most rated on Board Game Geek, this is like extremely high up there. It's a game I could even see Z playing in a tournament, even if he forgets about it. No. This is Pandemic. No. Yes, is. I think this might be the number one rated game on Board Game right. Geek. I think it's pretty close. It's if huge. Not. It's like extremely popular. It's in mass market stores, like everywhere. Like it's just all over the place. And this it's, is your it's Grand Papi's wingspan. Mm. It was number one for a ton of years, um, but it's here you at know? 17 still after having tons of different versions. This original version is the one that people are picking. I mean, you don't lump any of these together, right? So. The original no, version no, no, actually no, has right. wooden bits, right? Well, you know, this did not come out the gate with a bang. No, this came right? out, and I was just talking about that to someone, and that's because the original print run was pretty small. Yeah. Really? It was? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I used to, I bought this, I don't know why I was so hot on it, I was aware of it already, but I bought this, like, as soon as it came out at, a, at the local game store that used to be there. Yeah. I bought this, the original one, and loved it, of course, and still do, but that's funny that thinking back now, I'm like, yeah, this became a huge it hit. It really did. This it was not one of the ones that was big right away. Yeah, yeah. It is interesting, though. This is now 17. This is the first time it's actually dropped out of the top 10 in a decade. Wow. So It's competing with itself, though. That's yeah. There's true. new pandemics. There's pandemic legacies. Yeah. There's all sorts of things, and there's also a lot more... These of these welcoming style I, games. I feel like a lot of yeah, times people people get to the point where it's like these really 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 hot games that like saturate the market so much people start to like wane on them because they played it. You know, it's like oh, I course. have played Pandemic, so right. it's like how high are you going to rate it in your top games of all time because you've played it to death. That's, also, that's, that's an amazing true. How many game. people do you, in like gaming mm -hmm. haven't played Pandemic? Not right. many, I would think. And also, I, do I think, think if they haven't, they're not a real gamer. That's I would correct. Say. I, 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 that, 100 that true. That was implied. Do not agree with that. That was Nonsense. implied. Um, I also think that Pandemic was probably the game that was responsible for the explosion of cooperative games. Because yeah. cooperative games had, had existed before Pandemic, but many people, this is their first exposure to a cooperative sure. game. And publishers are, of course, going to notice that and say, hey, let's get co-ops out there. I know yes. the first ones I, I played with was that. this and Arkham Horror, and that was yeah. it at the beginning. So. Someone right. in comments yeah. said that they pulled Pandemic. They just pulled Pandemic from a lot of the different things. 
the and, uh, video like online. Yeah, a lot of yeah, the different yeah, apps yeah. proposed. Yeah. And as with they, because people are like, oh, they did it because of COVID. That's not why. No, they did it because they wanted. They said they're going to be releasing a new version. Now you can say that's money grubbing, but those versions of Pandemic have been around for ten years. I think it's legit to go back and I publish a new version of the game That first well. app was really good, though. Then they updated it, and it was significantly worse than the original app from seven years ago. I agree with that. Sure, so I yeah. think Asmodee well, doesn't want that is, kind of this app. This new one's basically Yahtzee. Right. If they continue that trend. That's correct. No, Asmodee apps, have you seen the Gloomhaven app? That's an Asmodee app. What, is, it, is it developed in-house? Well, we don't know what they're going to do All yet, right. but I, I would assume so. All right. I'm All looking right. forward to whatever they do with this, yeah. Mm -hmm. So, Pandemic, the people's number 17. My number 16 has risen quite a bit. It is a... Rising uh, 5. No, it's an older game. Uh, we Brad. played it. We played it here recently, and <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. What did you Christian say? Bread, bread <laughs> has Jordan. risen. I get it, oh. but I, I know, really I, wish I, I had. I'm ashamed to myself. I'm sorry. Wow. Sorry, Mike. My I apologize goodness. on his behalf. <laughs> My number sixteen is uh, probably the best auction game I think that that exists. Raleigh. Raleigh. Raleigh is correct. Raleigh. Raleigh. Yes, yes. Uh, I absolutely adore Raleigh. That's the worst of my uh, bread one. Yeah. We played it recently uh, in a live play, and it was a fantastic experience. It's a, it's a closed economy auction game where one of the things that you are essentially auctioning is, is the ability to get other auctions because you're putting in what you bid for other people that are going to take on the, on the next auction. It's got a push-your-luck element to it. It has this great kind of meta thing where people are wanting the raw to come out. It is just such yeah. a simple design, such an easy to explain game, and it, it really just always seems to go over well. You know what I mean? It is just a fantastic game, and they're coming out with a new edition right. with uh, some artwork by Ian O'Toole, and I, the thing is, I actually have never owned this game. It's almost always either had a very short print run, well, since the original, had a short print run or been out of print, Right, really? you know that. Yeah, yeah. Really? The Fantasy Flight did this wind well, rider thing. Yeah, that was briefly. short lived. Yeah, I used to own the Uber Play version. Yeah, back it in was. The day. They, they were like, remember Uber Play? Oh, Uber Play. Yeah. Yeah, baby, that was a blast from the right. past. Right, but they were like finite periods of time where it was available. And then, epochs, one might say. Yes, epochs. You might say that indeed. And so a new one's coming out with the uh, you know tool art. So that will be the first version of Art Raw I own. I've you're, always played other copies. You were waiting for Ian O'Toole to finally That's make what it is. your copy of Raw. You complete me. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and move on now. <laughs> <laughs> Ian O'Toole, I apologize for this. If you would have put out a restraining order against Mike, we won't, we won't be witnesses. That you're that. That. <laughs> I'm just saying, I don't know if a uh, restraining order in New Zealand would... Or is he is in he New Zealand? I don't know. You should know. It felt like fishing, though. I, I don't like have fishing. his home address, I don't think. <laughs> is he in New Zealand? Where is he from? <laughs> okay, calm down. Okay. Anyway. <laughs> My number 16... Would have been uh, several years ago, something along the lines of Ghost Stories, but mm. now it's simply Last Bastion. I still haven't played I this version. Them around, they're very close. They're, this is really a reprint of that with some some clarifications, a simpler, more streamlined package. Mm. This is fun, Mike. This is really neat. It's um, I need to try it. If you liked Old Tray, yeah. Which I, I know you did. You you got to try this. And I thing. like ghost stories a lot. I've never won. But yeah. Why are you saying oh, well, Altrey if he's playing never ghost mind. stories? Yeah, yeah. I thought you hadn't played <laughs> No, I just haven't played this version. No, never mind, Mike. I, was I just can't up. get over that theme change. I Fantasy's fine, but I really like that weird, creepy I ghost know, story. The theme yeah. was definitely stronger before, and mm. I'm, I chose to sacrifice that for the clarity of purpose here, right? This yeah. one just moves a little quicker. It's a little simpler. Uh, it's also just generally an easier game to try to to win, because Ghost right. Stories is quite the punishing game, and this one is an easier game ultimately to to win. But yeah, I enjoy this lots and lots. Fantastic uh, co-op game, very tight, best at four. Mm. So you do kind of want to try to stick to four players, but even if you can't get them all, this is worth playing. All right, my number 16 is my second to last new game to the list. Ooh, and it is a crossover with Mike and Z. Wow. It's a good game, then. It is. 
But not getting a lot of love yet because it's not widely available, probably. And that's Vagrant Song. Oh, there we go. There we go. Wow, Tom. I know. 16. I, I'm wow. sorry. I reviewed it, Tom. Yeah, right? Why don't you go ahead and pull my review down and only leave up <laughs> the important review of that's this game, correct. Tom? Why don't you go ahead and just skewer me like an animal, Tom? There's a lot I like about this game. Oh, I'm sorry. What were we talking about? <laughs> <laughs> I love the theme. I love the art. I like the characters. Mm. I think the writing is good. I like the fact that it is a boss battle a dun in a dungeon space that's a train of cars, and it takes me about five or less minutes to set up right. each round. That's huge. Yeah. I that's like huge. the ev the bag yeah. system's amazing because you can throw events in that bag. When you yep. pull that event, it happens. Yeah. Um, so it's neat. such a smart it's design. A thing, it really yeah. is. The, the combat system works really well. The item system that they help you. But they also determine how the the bad guys move. Um, it's a campaign, right. but doesn't feel like if, if we were at a convention, I would pull and say, "Let's just play a, a session of this," yeah. Yeah. And, and and I would feel fine with it. Doesn't feel as demanding. I yes, guess, right, right. Um, yeah. It's, Man, also really so, like it's also so versatile too, right? Just with the components that are already in the game. I'm not saying they would do this, but you could easily. Just have more scenarios. You know what I mean? Because the board is always the board. The board is the mm. board. I mean, you could have PDF scenarios. You're that, right. You know what I mean? You could print out a PDF. Like Absolutely. The, the front of the page, the back has the events right. triggered. Here's how it looks when you set it up, and you've yeah. got another scenario. I mean, yeah. if it's the a, community gets behind right. this, they could put out one offs. Yeah. It's a very versatile system. And awesome. in a yeah. world. Yeah, yeah. I remember I used to in wish for more dungeon <laughs> crawls. Yeah. I no longer wish that. We have. Mm. Dungeon Crawl's coming out almost on a weekly basis. It feels. This one feels different. Yeah, maybe. I guess it's not it technically does. it's a boss battler over Dungeon Crawl-ish sort of thing. Sure. Whatever, they're in the same grouping, really. It's a tactical, yeah, a tactical but kind of a But it feels tactical. cool. That whole, you're on a train going off. Yeah. I love that theme. I really mm -hmm. do. Mm -hmm. So, uh, yeah. I know that the question will be like Townsfolk Tussle. They're very different games. Very different I played Townsfolk Tussle after I made this list. I don't know where I would put it yet on it. Yes. I need another year to think about that. I agree. But for now, Vagrant Song is hot fire for me. Yeah. I really need to play this game. I feel That's like amazing. I would actually really like it. It's really so. good. It's 16. Good. Wow. Mm. Yeah, I, wow. Thought, I, thought, I, I, I would not be overly surprised if it drops a bit as the years go by. But right well, now, I, I really it like it. gone next year. Oh, okay, whatever. <laughs> Out right. of the library? No, no. <laughs> that means you stole it. That's what happened. The People's Choice number 16 has been on the list for every year. Um, and it's been up there for a long time. It's normally in the top 10. It wasn't in the top 10 last year. It's not in the top 10 this year. But Wait, it's what still was it 16. Last year? It was 14 last year. Oh, okay. Mm. Yes. But you know what? Uh, changes on the People's List, minor changes, are bigger they shifts are, to They me. are a big deal. Sure, right. That. But that does mean that there's a few other games that have shifted up there. But mm. this is Seven Wonders. Wow. The drafting game that people talk about all the time. Building up your civilization, trying to get those science things, but don't let Mike get all the science things so that he wins. Look. Um, you know, Seven Wonders. Watch out it's, for science. It's, yeah. It's, it's really really fun. You can get blinded. Science. You can get blinded by it. You can get blinded by those green cards. Like, uh, they have a few too many green cards. Time to hate draft. Wait, you're not going to? I guess we just let them win. That's right. But yeah, Seven Wonders is a blast to play. I'm not mad at Mike about anything. I've actually never played this game with Mike. I don't know why. Are you serious? <laughs> I was thinking there was some beef going on. I'm feeling like I'm, I, was, I was having a false memory of beating Roy at Seven Wonders. I'm like, man, I... You never beat me at I was Seven like, Wonders. man, that was great. I we should Roy. implant a false memory in someone sometime. Like, just mm -hmm. remember that time you the did Mandela that? Mandela effect kind of thing? Yeah. yeah. Okay, yeah. Be like, no, no, that was Mike from a different dimension. Because <laughs> the Mike in this dimension never beat me in Seven Wonders. That's for sure. That's outrageous. Wow. <laughs> Right. He went from getting mad at you to insulting you. Right. Anyway, some wonders is great. Teach me how to do it's that. It's a fun game. <laughs> um, you're drafting cards, and and the fact that you're all playing at the same time is one of the things that I think yeah. people really like. It's hard. Like it's a, a big up. Like the teach at the beginning, you're gonna have to teach everybody because you're doing everything yes. at the same time. But it's it's a blast to play, and it's highly rated by a lot of people. So. It's also not a gateway game. Definitely no, not. No, yeah, not it, that, that was Seven Wonders Architects. Sure, is a gateway game. I think a lot of folks try to make this a gateway yes. game because it played quickly. Yeah, because it's only a forty-minute game. You got to come there's prepared. There's a lot of iconography there's a lot on stuff. There's a lot in there. Yeah, this is not really a good gateway, I think. Yeah. Awesome. Seven Wonders, number sixteen. My number 15 is an absolutely charming polyomino game 
called The Isle of Cats. Oh. Yes, yes. This is a game that, um, while, as I mentioned, Even it has he polyominoes. he pronounced the name carefully. Yeah. Yeah. Isle of Cats. Um, the polyominoes are, rep are representing these cats that are laying in very cat-like poses across your board. And, but there's much more to it than that. It, it's more than just a polyomino puzzle game. It also is a very clever drafting game where the cards that you're drafting are going to give you scoring opportunities. It also has a, a nice bit of economics to it because okay. some of the cards are going to be giving you fish, which are used to pay for some of these things that you're doing. You learn a little bit more. You get a little more information fed to you throughout the game as far as how the different colored cats are going to score, and I really like that aspect of the game. Uh, it is also a very versatile game in that you can play it with younger players or with newer gamers because they've got a family variant built right in, which just strips away some of the rules. Um, really, really solid game. I think a charming game, and one that I feel like could be something that sticks around for years. I, I really do feel like this will go beyond the polyomino kind of craze that has happened. I think this stands above the rest. In my opinion, of course. I don't know what it is about this game. I just, I have no interest in playing it. I actually think you would not like it. Mm. And I'll tell you why, because you're, it has that Bunny Kingdoms thing going on, and there's a ton of end game scoring there kind of nonsense. Scoring, sure. And I think you would yeah. not like that combo. I don't know. It's You're also not a look. huge polyomino guy. I like them. Fine. I, I enjoy plenty of them, but that cover really does nothing for mm. me. I look at a board and I go, Another polyomino game, even if that's an illusion, right? I don't know. I the think game. he doesn't like cats. I think that could that's be it, it too. Is. Yeah. You're afraid to say you love cats. Cats hate me and my, and <laughs> well, my I mean, physiology. Cats hate everybody. So, so. Yes. The cats uh, <laughs> attack my innards. <laughs> well, maybe one of these days you'll try it. Maybe you won't. Who knows? Uh, pass. Mm -hmm. <laughs> my number fifteen was mentioned already, but it's not been on anyone's list. How is that possible? <gasps> it's trash. You say. Somebody said it. Well, Twilight and Pyramids have been on anyone's list yet. But somebody literally at the table it's said it. List. Not very long ago. And it was you, Tom. Was it today? Yeah. Just, what, maybe 15 minutes ago you said this game. But it's not been on anyone's list. It's a mystery. Five Tribes. No. It's, that's been on my list already. Oh, you're right. But I, well, I said that earlier. How is this possible, Tom? Well, I don't know. Okay, is I'll it just tell you what it is. All right, it I catch all kind of grief about... Delaying the name. I didn't notice how quickly you did. Oh, God, so I, I did. applaud you for Thank that. Thank you, sir. All right, well, I'm going to take my while. This is a game. <laughs> no, In I'm a kidding. world. The 15 is Caper Europe. Oh, oh. wait. Was this not on your list? Number 15. Now, wait, wait. This came now, out paper. yesterday. Yeah, this yeah. game came out yesterday. And well, it's number 15 on your list. To be fair, Caper's been on my list for, yeah, for a few years. That is true. Um, and I just, I just obviously, I'm no longer including Caper. I'm including Caper Europe. Right. So playing this, I was already bringing all that knowledge, and I, to be honest, I've, I've played it a decent amount already. This is a very quick game mm. to play, mm. easy to teach. You can jump right into it. I already really liked Caper. I really liked Caper. And something weird happened, though, when I played Caper Europe. Obviously, you know, learn the differences and all this. I now can't not see the flaws in the old one. Mm. I don't know if that makes sense. Like I've never played I, the old one, so I wouldn't know. So when Caper Oceana comes out, are you going to find the <laughs> This goes in this into one? the garbage got bin. Got it, got it, okay. No, I don't know what it is. This one has the, the tracks is a new concept, right? So, oh, is it? Well, so you, you can control, say right like we all know. No, no, listen, okay? I'm trying to teach you something. you got to grow. <laughs> and I'm not talking uh, complex. Uh, <laughs> all right? Uh -huh. um, no, that the tracks is a new thing as to who controls the cities. Used to be... Something that wasn't tracked anyway. You just counted how many you were oh, pulling. Oh, well, tracks is faster. Tracks is faster. It's also simpler. This game is simpler than Caper by a little bit. But now that I have those tracks and just the simplicity of when you score a painting, taking a token and physically putting it in your 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 um, hideout, all those things were not you know that trackable before. Just now I. Would never not play this edition. I think. I think. I mean, I just. It's so clean. It's so mm. engaging. I love how tightly balanced this game is. I have now had two games that have gone to the second tiebreaker. It's very tight. So everything is is important. Everything you do. Yeah, I love this two-player game. It's one of my favorites now in uh, in the two-player realm. So Caper Europe. 
gorgeous, and I love it. I think Keymaster may have. I mean, they just have not put out a bad production yet. A production, yes, I agree. I mean, their some production games may be stronger there. than others, but the production is ridiculous. No, I said that they're they're really good at having light, ter lighter games with great production. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, their graphic designers and their artists mm -hmm. are some of the top notch notch people in in board gaming. For sure. I think. For sure. My number fifteen was new to the list last year at sixty eight. It's moved up. I love this game, even though the board is. Pretty bland looking because I love tech trees. Oh, and wow. And that is oh, wow. Beyond the Sun. Yes. Ooh. I really wow. love this game. Man. And fortunately, so does everyone else in this play group, apparently, because yeah. I, I don't promise ever getting this one at the table. Mm. Um, uh, when we first got together for games this year, this was the one everyone trooped in. They're like, Beyond the Sun. Yeah. Everyone wanted to learn it because they hadn't played it. And I knew we had a copy here in the studio. And I actually went and got another copy because it was so popular at the retreats. Oh, wow. And it was played a lot. Mm -hmm. And I think I played this with you the first time. I did because I played this without you guys. We played I was it like, together, all three. Yeah, oh, I was like, you taught us. Yes. I really looked at it and thought, no way will you guys like it. I played it and I was like, I think they might, yeah. you know, because it doesn't play like it looks. This looks yeah. like a 4X game, sort of. But it's really a worker placement game, and it's just one of the X's. Well, no, it's two. It's Explore and... And Exfoliate. <laughs> yeah. Extreme. Um, Ex uh, expand. What is the exploit. tech one? Exploit. No, Exploit is take the resources off the planet. Explore, exploit, 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 exterminate. It's Explore and Expand, Tom. Yeah. Yeah, explore and Expand, right. right. Listen uh, to this man every now and then. I try, you know. I will say, when you taught us this game... Anyway. <laughs> I'm kidding. A couple of rounds in, in, a couple of rounds in, this was one of those games, and maybe you guys have had, the, everyone watching has had this. A couple of rounds in, we start looking at each other, mm -hmm. and it's like, are you thinking this I is as same, good as I'm thinking it is? What's funny is I had to say, I was about to say that I had the same feeling learning di this as I did when we learned uh, Fallout Shelter. Right, right. Oh, yeah, it's yeah. a very similar experience. Yeah. They're not alike, obviously, no. in any way, but it's like you go into a game, and... A few rounds in, you do that whole. This is this, this is really is good. Better, right? Then. Like maybe we thought it. Would and be, I right? could see this because I like, let's play this, and everyone's like, "Well, you're the boss, fine." You know, yeah. that was kind of the attitude. Yeah. Not the most, you know, like yeah, all right. inviting looking board and everything. I just but. I suspect it, yeah. but anyway, I really like this. Mm. If you haven't had a chance to play it, it's it's really fun. I'm looking forward to. Playing again because every yeah. game the text that come out is different. That's cool. Yeah, it's it, a lot of fun. I need to play it more. It's not on my hundred, but I think it's because I haven't played it enough. Right. I really do want to play this more. Mm -hmm. All right, Beyond the Sun. Awesome. <clears throat> Got it. <laughs> Sorry. Space. I haven't played. Um, oh. Pandemic Legacy Season One. No. It's a pandemic. Pandemic. Fest. On Pandemic. Mm. This is not the first Legacy no, game, but it's that. definitely the one that shot to amazing heights, and this is the one that a lot of people have played. Uh -huh. I mean, it's like super highly rated on BGG, and I, I feel like a ton of people have played this one, and that's why they enjoyed the experience. Did you play through it? I played this through was number two most on BGG. of it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it was number, it's, it's still number two, right? I don't know. Right the top yeah, ten now is pretty fluxy mm, compared to where it was. This was number three on BGG. Now it is. Oh, now okay, it's four. Okay. After they saw you. No, anyway, um, but yeah, Pandemic Legacy, it's pandemic with, with twists and things like that. We're not going to do any spoilers or anything crazy like that. But We're it's not. like, it adds a lot of story right. to Pandemic. And it allows you to play through different parts and things change in the game as things go along. You get to rip cards, put stickers on things. It's it's it. fun. So that's why people really enjoy yeah. Pandemic Legacy Season 1. It's, like it's an interesting you said you book. get to rip right. cards. Some people say right. you have to rip cards. Right. Ripping cards is the best part. Um... I'm not inviting this guy for games. <laughs> when, when we played Clank Legacy, they made me rip all the cards, and I enjoyed it. You enjoy it. Yeah, you do like that. You're a destructive human. That's you know? true. <laughs> I, like, didn't hey, do, I didn't do anything in Clank Legacy because... Sam did the stickers. Sam was like, no one else is putting these stickers on the mm. board. Because He's I, very meticulous about I'd it. I'd be like, I'm putting on slightly crooked. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and then Roy ripped all the cards, so I'm just playing the game. You're just reading the story. Oh, that's right. Fine. I was reading the stories. Okay, all right. What did you do? Anyway, completely different game, but this there. game is also... wasn't invited. Not invited That's either. Correct. Yeah, we were, we were off playing Fallout show. <laughs> there you go. Pandemic Legacy Season 1, The People's Choice number 15. You know, I used to say I don't like skirmish games. I used to say that. We still say that. 
It's incorrect. It's an incorrect statement. I have found that as I have played more kind of tactical skirmish games, mm -hmm. I've found some that I like. And this one came out of nowhere for me. I absolutely adore this game. I call it a system because there have been multiple expansions that take this core mechanic and go crazy with it. This is Wildlands. My number 14 oh my is goodness. Wildlands. You are a, a bigger fan of this mm. than Martin Wallace. Correct. <laughs> Correct. <laughs> I've personally written to Martin Wallace a number of times and, and said, hey, keep it coming. Keep it coming. And he said, yes, Mike. So you like this be better than the, the, the Judge Dredd one? Oh, much better than Judge Dredd. Because, well, because there's much more to it. It's essentially mm -hmm. the same game. Mm -hmm. uh, but, but Wildlands is a, as I mentioned, a tactical skirmish game where you have different maps uh, that, that you can play on that are potentially add different kind of you know, terrain type scenarios, high ground, low ground, cover, no cover. But it's such a simple card based system where you are playing these cards to move around the map and either do damage, it could be melee attacks or ranged attacks or magic attacks. But it also has a really clever setup, which is one of my favorite aspects of the game, which is at the beginning of the game, there's 40 spaces on the board, and there's a deck of those 40 cards, and you deal out 10 cards to everybody who's playing. They look at those 10 cards. Five of them are going to be the spawn points of their own troops, mm -hmm. and the other five are going to be the shards, the little crystal shards of another player. And you win the game by either knocking out the other player completely or by getting your own shards. And so it's really a neat little system to set the game up where you can kind of say, all right, well, I'm going to kind of as much as I can, set these shards up, and then I can put my people around and ambush them. You know, when they try to come towards that shard, there's my guy, bam, I'm hitting you in the face. <laughs> and make sure that they're spread out, too. You can right? do that, you can spread out. You can be like, okay, well, this one and this one are literally in opposite corners, so those are going to be your shards. Exactly. You just yeah, got there's... Wallace. It's a neat idea, yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, the setup's really you cool. You got Wallace. One. You got Wallace. So anyway, I really like this game. I've gotten all of the different expansions. They came out with a big box expansion recently that you made a co-op if you want. Mm. Um I like that tighter board that works yes. well with two. They've got some two-player specific boards, That's which good. which are great. So yeah, I like the undead. They come back to life. The undead are great. Yeah, and I like that you can play them as factions or as NPCs too. Those extra characters. So really neat system. Wildlands. I heard would have pronounced it that way before. NPCs. NPCs. Yeah. <laughs> Reese's and pieces. Reese's and pieces. If they're undead. Oh, I thought you. Do they come back to life? You replace one of your dead yeah, people it's... with one of them. No, I'm no. saying they're called undead. They're, they're the, reanimated, they're, sorry. If they're undead, they're obviously not dead. They're called yeah, the so they don't come back to dead. life. That's what I'm saying. Well, then right? they die because they were undead before, and then they come back, and now they're undead again. They're called the unquiet dead. So are we all undead? Undead too. If we're not dead, we're undead? That's Necromancy Boogaloo. Check, please. Where's going? <laughs> uh, on to Necromancy Boogaloo. And then we're eating humans. Oh! Cannibal Central. That's your next one? I don't know what's, I don't know what's going no, on. No, my next one is a crossover with you, Tom. Oh, Pretty wow. high for you, too. It's Another right. two-player game. Uh, Targi. Targi mm. is my 14. Yeah, hey, I know I, you do like this more I than me. I love it, baby. This is uh, the worker placement game for two people and two people hmm. only. There's really not that many. I was going to say, it's a very small category. But um, <laughs> just really fun. Turn angsty tension in this with you either taking resources from the cards or spending them to build up your little very simple tableau that's that's the deal that's what you're doing but then of course the uh, way in which you take these cards is by putting a worker where on the on two cards where that one intersects and those are abilities those outside perimeter cards will have their own thing that they do and like you said you know there's that i'm gonna put a guy here I want this card, and I'm putting a guy here, and then the other one needs to go somewhere here, up or up or down, on this line. But if you put one on either one, I cannot be directly across from you. So it's like, don't you... And you're waiting, and you're like hoping and maneuvering, and there's one of the ones on the outside that lets you bend the rules and like scoot your token over. Yeah, it's That really... one's always like, as soon as... I'm just waiting. The fastest play I ever do is put the first guy out, and then if you go on my column, I'm hoping to go on, as soon as you go there, I'm like, I'm taking this one. So I can move right. into the spot I yes. want. Yeah. Really, really fun two-player game. Targi is fantastic. All right, my number 14 was 19 last year, so it's moved up. 
Many times when I describe a game, I'll say, do you like this board game? You'll like this one. This yeah. one, I say a video game. I say, do you like Final Fantasy Tactics? Then you will like Adventure Tactics. Mm. Domain's Ooh, Tower. This is one wow. of those ones that kind of I like. You know, <clears throat> sure. This one has not gotten a lot of big buzz, but man, it's deck building, tactical combat, mm-hmm. boss fights, essentially. I love it, and the main reason I love it is because you level up. If there's one thing I like in games, it's leveling up. Yep. Mm-hmm. Um, I play a video game. Once I get to that point where you're like no longer leveling up, right, you're out. I kind of like, ah, oh, it's not as interesting anymore. You're mm-hmm. done. Yeah, I kind of fade out of the game. In this one, every mission you level up and you make your deck better and you go up different classes, and there's so many classes, and it's very family friendly. It's a great theme. I love this game. Just yeah. fantastic. Not showing up on a people's choice for sure because I, I it's not got a lot of buzz. Or not. No, I was on my list last year. Really? Yeah, yeah. I was 19 last year. Did it year. ever go to retail, Tom? I think that might be part of the issue. That could be. Well, yeah. I don't. I don't a even know how games. that retail right. stuff right. works anymore. Yeah, I know. Um, but okay, okay. I really like. I'm not even aware of that one. Yeah, like you put it up. I'm like, yeah, I guess I've seen that, but it's like just not in my consciousness. I'm not. I'm not familiar with it. I. And I don't want to be. Let me make that clear, okay? You keep this at home. (laughs) My kids really love this game. And I think it's because you pick that class. Like, I'm a fighter. Mm. And then I'll be a fighter level two. Then you decide, do I want to be a fighter level three? Or maybe I want to be a cleric level one? Or maybe I want to switch to paladin? Mm. Man, it's fun. Is there a bard in this? Can you be a bard? I think so. I'm in like Flint. Let's go. Sing it. Dun. Let's go back in time. And that's Adventure Tactics. And we'll take it higher. Number 14 <laughs> is a game that basically basically almost everything in life <laughs> makes Mike like this less. This is Azul. <laughs> Woo! Oh. The fact that the people... Is this the highest rated of the Azul? Well, we can't know for sure. No, I know I know for sure. It is. Oh, okay. um, Interesting, Tom. That's yeah. interesting. Your favorite, right? Yes! It's the, the best other one, clearly. You consider the other ones to like not even well, exist, right? Mike, Mike, the fact that the other ones exist make me like Azul. Mike, do you like any of the pandemic things better than Pandemic? Because um, they're uh, also all rated lower than Pandemic. <laughs> you cannot use that philosophy. And then, do the Ticket to Ride maps better than Ticket to Ride? No. What do you like... Whatever, whatever I need to say to make me win this argument, I'm going to say. But yeah, it's a, it's a game where you're drafting different tiles and putting them into the grid to gain points. Um, you can play with Jason, where he'll hate draft you a whole bunch. It's a lot of fun. Uh-huh. But, you played uh, this with Jason? Yes. That was a mistake. And it made me like a Zulus. That was a mistake. Yeah. But, uh, but yeah, it was, it was fun. It's a, it's a cool little game, and I know it's super popular. People are super What was it last it. year? Last year. It's actually gone up. It was 22 last so year. So past Pandemic this year. Yes. Wow. Interesting. Which is crazy. Past Pandemic and Pandemic I'm not, Legacy. I'm and not it's okay with that. I think this, is, this game has just such a So you're saying people right? don't know what they're it's talking about? It's got a lot of staying That's not what I'm saying, but I am thinking it really loudly. <laughs> It's got a lot of things going for it. It's an abstract game that looks gorgeous. It has a great production. It has a mm-hmm. simple rule set. I mean, I just, it's a really, really I still really think Starburst should sponsor this game. Absolutely. Exactly. Ooh, Azul Starburst Edition. Correct. With edible pieces, yes. i.e. a legacy game. Correct. <laughs> I know it wouldn't be a legacy game. It would just be legacy because I'd be like, we're ready to start. I've seen mm. people Where's put, the pieces? You know, do this with pictures oh. and stuff. But. <laughs> Mm. But yeah, Zool, the People's Choice number 14. My number 13 was also number 13 <clears throat> last year, and it was also on Tom's list. And this has the unfortunate uh, happenstance of being a very difficult to get a hold of game. It's. Uh, Monumental. It's monumental in every sense of the word. That's the name of the game, but it also describes wow. the... Uh, this is the, high the, for you. Yeah, I, I absolutely adore this game. When you mm-hmm. talked about it the first time, I was intrigued. I'm like, that sounds interesting. But then when I sat down and played it, this was a game that hit me first time I played it. I'm like, this is brilliant. I love the idea that you've got kind of your main area, this this grid of cards where you activate as Tom said when he talked about it a row and a column you do what those do what they say this is the the micro version that then gets expanded out into that macro version of the map and I love that idea of here's what I'm doing here but it affects everything out there okay it's just it's almost like 
inset the game, right? It's like you're working on the inset of what's happening on that map. And it, it's just a really clever system of uh, simple to, to control resource management, mm -hmm. moving these troops around on that map, uh, gathering the, the uh, objectives. A pretty clean rule set, honestly. And also, this is one time where I'll agree with Mike on this, because I, I know it from fact, is that it's a good solo game. It's a great solo I, game. I don't, yeah. normally really? play, I don't normally... I played a solo because I would it was... not have picked this yeah. for a solo anything. Right. No, it's a really good card-based solo. Yeah, like, you pick one of the other people, and they... They'll be, they might be more aggressive, right. they might do something in a different way. I was surprised. Okay. Yeah, okay. and that's something to mention too, is that there's, it's slightly asymmetric in that whatever civilization you're playing as has some different strengths and weaknesses, some cards that are unique to their civilization. It's more asymmetric as a solo game. I agree. Yeah, because they they make them more they different. They specifically do that. When yeah. you play, you could pick a guy who's a good at attacking, and then kind of go, "I don't want to do that," and you're fine. Right, you can draft sure, wonder sure, cards right. or whatever instead. Yeah. yeah, just a really good game. I wish it was easier to get a hold of, but look, that just I, is part of the hobby now. I yeah. feel like it's a shame that I haven't played this game because I feel like I would really like it. It's yeah, yeah, to have a lot I'm of stuff that I'm really into. It's a really clever design. All right, where are we at? Thirteen. Mm. My number thirteen is Blue Moon or Blue Moon Legends, whatever. Oh, wow. They're really the same game. Yeah. Uh, this has been a favorite of mine for many, many years now. A two-player, head-to-head, battler kind of game yeah. uh, with different factions. And you know, the original one came with two in the box, but there were more available that you could buy individually. Then Blue Moon Legends packaged them all into one box change the format of the cards to be standard size instead of these nice large cards. Oh, coming with the classics. And, uh, <laughs> yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah. Come on, yeah. Mike. Let me do old school, baby. Um, this game is underappreciated by some people at the table. Mm. But others... Proudly! I others do understand not this that this is an excellent, excellent game. It is. Again, what was the other one? I talked about Radlands, right? right. Already. These give me a similar feel. Yeah. Radlands is a, a combined deck, right? So we're drawn from the same deck. Yeah. Whereas here, you have your own. But it's this concept, and, and again, Rez Arcana kind of does it, of doing a lot with very little. Of mm. feeling like a collectible card game without the baggage. Mm. The keyword menagerie. And the obviously purchasing, you know, extra stuff and finding all that stuff. But... I still get some of the same emotions. Sure. The grand turns, the slow playing you so you'll commit more so I can drop a hammer on you when you overcommit it, right. you know? Right. All those things, the tricks and the traps along the way. Discovering your favorite faction among the eight or nine that are available. All right. those things are just candy, you know? Yeah. I just love those things. So. Uh, I don't see this one going anywhere for me. I, I just really like Blue Moon. And although I don't do it, I don't know if you do, you, there's some deck construction you can have in there, yep. too. I just always played the base decks. But. Well, you're uh, what we call a, a peasant in Blue <laughs> I, Moon, you know? If you're not deck building, you're not playing. I just stick with the brilliance of the... I, I trust... The Ryan, good doctor? Ryan Maybe you don't. Maybe you feel like, oh, I need to take these and make them work. No, I trust him. I'll tell you right now, the decks aren't balanced. <laughs> I don't know who's got a math degree, but it's not Dr. Canizia. All right. Oh, okay. wait, the doctor stands for a degree, isn't it? I believe so. In mathematics, okay, correct. Yes. Yeah. Okay, fine. Fine. Mm -hmm. He does. That's my 13. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> All right. Thanks, Tom. Let's go, So my, royal of you. Uh, my number 13 was 12 last year, 12 the year before that. It's been on the list for... Dropping like a stone. No, it's been on... Yeah. It's been on the list for seven years. I think this was on Mike's list. Yeah, it was. Uh, Viticulture. Oh, yes. Wow. Viticulture. Well, this has been very... This was at four at one point. Man, that's awesome. Okay. I really like the worker placement in this game. However, my caveat here is it is with the four-player board. I mean, the four-season board. Sorry. The Tuscany board. The four-season board. I love the four-season board a lot. Um, the... I don't care about the unbalanced cards. I, the yeah. new ones, I guess, fix it all. Six of one, half dozen, another out of me. I, I enjoy the cards. Right. I like some of the stuff from the expansions that mix them in. Essential, whatever. Right. But I love the game. I really do. I like the worker placement and the the uh, kind of that angst that gives you of, I want to play more workers, but I want to save them for a future right. round. That's a good thing. And I, it's not been done almost by anyone else. 
Yeah, that's true. Or you've got kind of these finite stages, and if you use them all up it's here... It's like money, right? Yeah, I spend yeah. some well, it's money like here. Power Grid is actually what I was thinking of. The only one I can think of that does it is Power Grid. Where you have you make your money, and then you need to save it for bidding on power plants, buying resources, expanding, and eventually powering. St. Petersburg. Oh, St. Petersburg thing? does this. Oh, yeah. Okay. Because there's okay, those what rounds. What about the power grid? No, no. The power grid is a bad, a bad, okay, a well, really well, bad. Okay, that, that's well. a, what we call a rookie comparison. What about, uh, Funkenschlag? <laughs> ah, that's what we call a snotty comparison. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Funkenschlag, yes, yes. <laughs> anyway, Vinny Culture, fantastic game. It's still the, my favorite of all the. The, the Stone Meyer games. <laughs> I had to quick check. You want to get out of that? Just say the, the wine making games. <laughs> the wine making games. Yeah. <laughs> yes. All right. Vinny Culture. The People's Number 13 is a cooperative game. It's. It, I know it's really. Higher big. than Pandemic. Again, how was going Higher on? Higher than Pandemic. This is crazy, right? Um, and it is. Uh, it's really popular in the solo community as well. This is Spirit Island. Oh, oh, oh. Ooh, what is going on with this Man. game? Man. So You're wrong. Everybody That's what's going is on. All this one just goes island. up. It seems every year. It's mm -hmm. unbelievable Absolutely. to me. I it, missed it, something. It has. Mm -hmm. It was I call 56 it in 2018. It was 26 in uh, 2020. It dropped a little bit down to 30 last year. That's because it was out and, of print. Mm -hmm. And then this right, year, right. it's up to 13. Wow. Yeah. So it is. Wow. It is rising. It's one of the biggest changes sure. in the people's choice yes. for sure. But yeah, definitely. Uh, I haven't played the game. I know Mike, you've played right. So oh, I played. Yeah, you really like this, I like right? It a lot, yeah. 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 It's a good All one. right. You do have to have a base level of intelligence to go. play it. That may be why you bounced <laughs> off of it a little bit. Mm -hmm. You have to be uh, <laughs> you have to be literate to read some of the cards. No, and... I don't the literacy is not the issue. You just have to have a base level of intelligence, I think. Right? Wow, and people wonder why I'm mean to buy it. Come on now. He deserves it. Anyway, the people are smarter than most You're of okay. us, You're and okay. that's why it's no. <laughs> number 13. Hey, you, called me, you called me uh, complex. <laughs> uh. My number 12 is a game that requires absolutely zero intelligence. I think you're a big fan of this one, Z. My number 12 is a game about... <laughs> the hits keep coming, man. <laughs> this is a game that, that is a phenomenon. Is it Strike? This, this, no, this actually this game requires plenty of intelligence. Um, I have used this word for this game, but I think it fits. This game is a phenomenon. This is oh, wow. Wingspan. This is oh. a game that, that I think still has transcended kind of just modern hobby board gaming. It has gotten into mm. other parts of, of culture. It has been... Covered and talked about in places that you don't see board games typically That's talked true. about, mm -hmm. and there's a lot of reasons why. You know, sure, it's a very unique theme and it's a gorgeous production, but none of that would matter if the game was no good. I mean, mm -hmm. I think a lot of people just don't talk enough about what a good design this game is. It's a really, really uh, pleasant, satisfying game uh, that that has gorgeous art and, like Tom says, those unique birds and the different way that they work and. And, uh, you know, I, I have not played with the Oceana expansion, actually. Um, I think you should. I, I should I, try I, it, You right? should try it. I don't yeah. know what you think of it. But I will say, you know, earlier I, we were talking about Monumental. Here yeah. I'm going to say the opposite. Yes. I don't like the solo play of Wingspan. Mm. Oh, okay. I okay. don't. It felt like a robot. It, it mm. yeah it, it, it literally yeah it, it, it's a design philosophy that that they use. That I don't like. That. I know that uh, people like fall down and worship at the throne of this. Yeah. What's it called? The Automa oh. Factory. Yeah. I did not like it. Okay. Well, yeah. It, it felt like I was doing work. I just want to press a button and do you, robot do your thing. I don't want to play your game for I you too. You. Yeah. Well, no, I, get I, I get that. I get that. Um, but yeah, no, I actually don't play this as a solo game primarily. I like it as a solo game, but I mostly play this as a multiplayer game. Um, and uh, it's a game that I still enjoy playing, still enjoy introducing. Although I very rarely have to introduce this to people now. Sure. Usually, when I'm playing it, they know the game oftentimes yeah. better That's than I. That's true. Do. That's one of the you benefits know? of some of these games. Right. Right. So Wingspan, not just a pretty production, a really solid game too. Mm. My number 12 is, 12, yeah? Yeah, my number 12 is Paper Tales. Paper wow. Tales is still very high for me. Um, card drafting game. And uh, that still, I think, has some of the best iconography out there. And one of the best breakdowns of what a turn will be. I love that. And how everything is going to go. I, I really enjoy that in this game, there's like seven steps. Yep. 
It's like drafting and then building the people and paying for them. You, you flip them over and they produce and you fight and you then gather resources and build a building possibly. But they're all tied to an icon. Mm -hmm. And so you only, you then can just quickly scan your four or five cards yep. and see what triggers when. I know that some folks find this to be a little short at four rounds. Mm -hmm. It seems to be the... The, the complaint. premier complaint is I felt like I didn't do enough. The game ended too quickly. Four rounds is not enough. And I get that. This is a game that you have to know pretty well yeah. to then fight that feeling of, you know, because when you finally kind of come to terms with what the game is, it, it's like it's over. It just ended. So like I, I didn't do anything. What, what was the point of that? Once you are familiar with it, that gets better. Um, but yeah, just... The fact that, I mean, I love drafting anyway, but the fact that every character you look at it and you go, well, it costs this much, but it does this, but then it's going to age out right, right. quickly because you put an age token on the character, and then next round, if it has one already, it's gone. Mm -hmm. Just so good. This right. game kind of came out of nowhere and just blew me away. I really like this one. Not mm -hmm. one I often teach because yeah. I don't think it makes a particularly good first impression. I agree. Man, good first I, impression on me, but I've only played it once, and when I saw your list, I'm like, "Holy smokes!" At twelve, all the way up to twelve, and I'm like, "I need to play this again because I mean, yeah. it seems interesting. It's pretty." This cool. was. It's let good. me look here. This was seventeen last year, yeah. and nine the year before. So this wow. has been in my top ten. Yeah. Um. So yeah, Paper Tales, my number twelve. Yeah, it's mm. really good. Some of those cards really only work because the game is shorter too. That's the other thing, as you said, yeah. as you play it, you yeah. just got it. The timing is a huge part of the game. Yeah. Mm -hmm. My number 12 was 5 last year and 5 the year before that. So it's fallen out of the top 10, but I still love it. And in fact, I played my favorite version of it just a month or two ago. And that's Chronicles of Crime. Ooh. My favorite version is the 2400. Yeah, because it's a cyberpunk. It's oh, so, so good. But I've liked all the versions of Chronicles of Crime. I think they're fantastic. I, I know that you are scanning cards. Mm -hmm. But there comes a point in the game. At the beginning, you scan a few cards, and you say, go here. But there comes a point in the game where you sit there, and you're, if you're playing with someone else, which I like doing, you're like, they're lying. That person's lying. Mm -hmm. I think they're lying. Maybe this person did. Let's ask them about this. Because at a certain point, you can't just scan everything. Mm -hmm. You'll have 20 characters and 15 items, and you can't scan every all the combinations. You don't have time for it. The game won't let you. Right. So you're trying to pick the right things, but the story makes sense. I'll be like, wait a minute. Maybe that person wasn't mugged. Maybe they set up the whole crime or whatever it is. Yeah, you know. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. also, I've watched a lot of Law and Order and you know yeah. those those kind of things. And so that this definitely plays into that. Sure. And the newest one has you jumping into the internet. And you have your avatar, and you're using cybernetic implants to sense if someone's telling the truth or not. I love the noir one, where you can like beat up on someone and make them give you more information, but that can backfire on you. Yep. What about the dog? The dog. I like the dog. The dog is the best. dog is the dog one. is legit. <laughs> I like that one. Go sniff that person. Uh, but I, I, <laughs> I just, do like that mm -hmm. one. I have a lot of fun with this, and it has so many different versions. Yeah. And if you like procedurals. Uh, de detective law procedurals. I think you'll like this one a lot. It's I just so immersive, so. and I feel like the 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 rules are so simple. You can literally teach this to almost anybody. It's like a page of rules too, right? Yeah, Isn't that yeah, like, a big or one or two? Well, that's because there's a tutorial mission you can play sure. through, and it gives you everything. You scan yeah, stuff and solve the mystery. It's so easy. easy to get to the table, but right. it like feels like it comes off the table, and like as you're figuring out those different puzzles. And as a side note, there's now a kids version of it, which oh, is yes. fantastic. Mm, it's amazing. Very nice. Very, very nice. Um, so the people's that. choice... <laughs> I added an extra very, so it makes it... Very, right, very, you know I'm sorry, very right. nice. He's correct. Oh, three varies. There you mm. go. Um, so the people's choice number 12 is the highest rated CMON game. This is a game that has been around for a long time that people are really into. Um, it was all the way up to four with yeah. the highest it's gotten to. This is Blood Rage. Yeah, yeah, a game yeah. of drafting and putting out Vikings and area control and completing quests and building up combos with the different upgrades you have and conquering your opponents for glory of Valhalla. You know, that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. But uh, it's a lot of fun. I've played Blood Rage a massive <laughs> amount of times. I call that a Thursday night. Yeah, exactly. Right. 
you know. But uh, it, it's, it's interesting because with uh, Sam, yeah, it's interesting because people think like this is all just about smashing each other and in your face. It's very much about trying to figure out a way to manipulate the board into getting the most glory in different ways and booting up special combos and things like that. It's a lot of fun and it's got staying power because it's been on the list for such a long time. Very much. So familiarity and I, with this one helps a lot it too. It does. Yes. Like you were talking about some game where like. You probably don't teach new people. Race for the Galaxy, maybe. You were like, I'll try something weird or I'll go easy right, on that. Right, sure. Blood Rage, it mm -hmm. has that, I mean, through and through. Somebody who knows the game well, teaching people that don't, they're going to get wrecked. Yeah, there, mm -hmm. there can be some wild disparity in scores. In yeah, this and game. That, oh, in that sure. case, right? Yeah, yeah, especially because knowing the cards is a big part. Oh, huge. It's yeah. huge. Mm -hmm. Um, and I know we all have like the different parts of the trilogy at different spots. Like this yeah. is where the people have have they chose Blood Rage. This is the number we've one seen out. the other. No, well we haven't seen Ankh. But, Ankh no, we've and seen it won't be Rising Sun. We and did we've see seen Rising Blood Sun much. Yeah. Right now, okay. So. Okay. But yeah, people's choice number twelve. Blood Rage. This is a sad moment. I know. Because these are the games. That just missed the top ten. They are, and this is even sadder because this is my this, number eleven. We always say that, right? My yep. number eleven actually was my number ten last year, so this just got Ooh. knocked out out of the top ten. It is, I'm relatively sure, either a four way crossover, or I strongly suspect will be a strong a four way crossover. If it is not, uh, my number eleven is Dune Imperium. Um, just a, a flash in the pan. A flash in the pan. No, a, a, a really terrific design. And we've talked about it. I won't belabor the point. But the thing that I think I like most about it is something that I know you mentioned yeah. uh, it, when you talked about it is just that you're racing to 10 points. Every single one of those points just feels so gut wrenching to get mm -hmm. a hold of. You know what I mean? It's just like you are scrapping and scraping for, for, for those points. And. Um, you know, sometimes you're going to focus on the combat. Sometimes you're going to focus on making the alliances. Sometimes you're going to focus on on uh, other potential strategies that are out there. Mm -hmm. But every time I play it, I feel that this is one of the few games where I like the feeling of anxiety. Where mm -hmm. I like I, my stomach's in knots most of the time when I'm playing this game. But it there is are a some games draining. Oh, it is. What was this last? For, what was this last year for you? This ten. Was ten. It went down one. Just one? Yeah. Oh, was it was a 10. It came on at 10. It That's came on strong. at 10. Yeah, yeah. I, I, wow. I, and I still think it's fantastic. I've played the expansion once, and I thought that was great. Who knows how that'll affect that, because I probably will choose to play with the expansion more often than not, depending on the situation. And Rodney Smith, the things you've done... Because he, he, he started to buzz on this one. Did he? Yeah, because that's what got me interested. Because Roddy's like, I never get my opinion on games. Oh, but this one's great. Okay. You, well, sure. Okay. And I, I was like, is it? Let's find out. To Rodney Smith. Well, matter of fact, I give credit to all of Canada for my number eleven. That is. Don't you do that? Oh my goodness. <laughs> is that? Okay, that's cool. We like we like Canada. We like Canada. We like Canada. Okay. And and Canadians. Uh, my that was my number eleven. It's getting weird. Mm. My number 11 also got that, pushed that out of... a decade ago, just yeah. to clarify. Yeah, no, that's right. Yeah, it didn't just start getting weird. It continues to be weird. It's really what I should have said. My number 11 also got pushed out of the top 10. It was 6 last year. 6 the year before that. Probably 6 the year before six, that. 6, 6, 6! <gasps> uh, Claustrophobia. Oh, you already said that. Uh, yeah, what yeah, other right. DB games are there? This is one I taught to... Uh, I think Chris and Wendy at one of the retreats, one of my favorite games ever, clearly, Deus. Wow. Deus is, um, Tom loves it. That sigh means, gosh, that cover's beautiful. That's what that meant. <laughs> I actually don't, no, I don't dislike the cover. It's just that I still remember the first time they showed me the board, and I was like, oh, cool prototype. What's the actual game going to be? <laughs> oh, that's cold, yeah. Mm. No, I, um, it wasn't a joke. I thought it was a prototype. Right. And that's and it was cold, even if you didn't mean it. You know, it's just, I wasn't being malicious. Well, even sometimes uh, when you're not trying, you can be. I guarantee you that. What a complex cold thought. cold as ice. <laughs> <laughs> this game... Um, does one part it does a lot of things I like, obviously, but it does one particular thing that I'm a huge fan of. And any game that does it, I I always think, ah, oh, nice, this game does that thing. You play a card or take an action or whatever, and you leave it out on the board, and then later on when you do another one of that, that new one triggers and the old one re-triggers. Combos. Yeah. And so eventually if you build a column, as you see there, of like three or four of these cards, when you whenever you add a new one, you are really getting five powers, mm. not just one new one. 
It's I so great. Love that. That is so satisfying. This idea of like, I take four resources, and hey, look at that. Now I turn around and sell them for three gold a piece. And oh, hey, I can spend money for this other thing to move my people. Don't mind if I do. I really, really like that. Um, I don't know what it is. This is not really a. It's not a troops on a map game whatsoever. It's. No. It's kind of area control-ish. It's a card game yeah, yeah. with a board aspect to it. Mm -hmm. um, that's maybe that's what it is. Yeah. Maybe that's why I love it so right. much because it's really a card game. A card game. But yeah, I I just think this is a, a brilliant design that on your turn you have one of two possible actions. That's yeah. literally it: yeah. play a card or discard and redraw. Right. Right. Oh, it does so much with so little. I love that. I don't know. I'm a minimalist at heart. Mm. You notice that? Marie Kondo over here. Very complex. I, every time <laughs> I play this game, I think, and then I put it back on the show. <laughs> All right. Unlike you guys, mm -hmm. my number 11 went up, went from 15 to 11. Oh. However. It still didn't make it into the top 10. Ooh, the vibes here. Mike, do an Imperium. Whoa! Oh, for 11, it's on the top! And we're back to me feeling awkward between <laughs> you two. <laughs> Hello? We should have done the fist bump directly in front of his face. Oh, yeah, <laughs> even have another go. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> we are so Next dumb. time we'll have a glitter. <laughs> <laughs> glitter. And just just throw right, glitter anyway, dude and Perry. So here's what I... These guys have been talking about, that, that tightness of it. What I like about the game is the vast array of worker placement spaces and as an aside when you talked about it you said you didn't know about the expansion i will never play without the expansion ever if again. i'm teaching a new person i'm not sure i will teach you with the expansion that's right. how you're gonna learn tough luck wow. um <laughs> because i love technologies yeah the tech and is great i also like the main, that new track yeah. i like and i like the different cards mm -hmm. when you play with the new set there's more of the battle cards yeah so that's gonna be varied and there's more in the main deck, so you'll sure. very rarely see duplicates. Mm, sure. The card play is so fascinating to me. When I when I get a card, I'm sitting there thinking, I'm buying this card because of where it allows me to go. Right. Mm -hmm. But also because of what it lets me do, and the the choice, sometimes some of those cards, it's like, I want to play this card to do this, to go here, but also I want to keep it for the money. Mm -hmm. That is a great thing. I right. like that a lot. Mm -hmm. And so many times I've sat there and I've not played a card that I probably should have played because it gave me too money. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to buy a card at the end of my right, turn. Right, right, right. Yep. Ah, oh, so good. So good. And also it looks amazing. Okay. <laughs> That's unfortunate. Sure. Um, well, I guess I would rather have that than to have it be so... Obscured that it's unusable. I get it. You know I get I mean? it. A, and, but you the know game clearly delineated. This what's time what. the game transcends that so much. It does. I okay. mean, we have a beautiful. I, I really upgraded my version, but I just love it. I think it's, it's fantastic. This is going to be one of those games that it might be tricky because of licensing issues, but I could definitely see this getting like a 10th anniversary edition, right, or something yeah. like that, where they just do a whole new look, and the expansions already in it, or the two expansions right. that are out by then, or whatever. You know what I mean? That, if they ever pull that off and make it really a stunning looking game, that's that's gonna be, right. I jump in there. Also, dumb as it is, yeah. watching that movie made me like the game oh, a little sure. bit more, because sure. I was yeah. like, oh, I know, I know this character now! Yeah. That's a blast. And that, was, that was fun. The fact that they've now announced they are making the second half of it, which... Surprising nobody! <laughs> well, look, you know, Hollywood, it's all about money. It's it did well it's enough. But I think that, what I'm getting at, is I think that's gonna help that there's going to keep, yes. you know, supporting the game. Yeah, 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 yeah. So for the People's Choice number 11, um, I, in the People's Stead, am ready to fist bump not only Tom and Mike, because the People's Choice number 11 is also... What? Dude, <laughs> here, we in front of Aziz's face. <laughs> That's for you, people. That's for you. Mm -hmm. Dude Imperium four-way crossover. Wow. Everybody loves Dude Imperium. I had this a is, feeling, yeah. This is a great, Are you amazing kidding? game. You guys all pick. It's the same Every spot. Nice. Who's the voice Picked of the people it. now? Right. Change the Where song. Are you at? Why do you hate this game, Z? What did this you game's have, amazing. 250 or something like that. <laughs> Actually, what number like was it for you? It's pretty high up. Look at 37. If I'm... 37, you said? No, you said that. Yeah, he said it. Yeah, that's so weird. Dune Imperial. All right, Why would you know man? It? Definitely because a good I it, Definitely time for Wapner. I didn't. I didn't look back, but I just remembered it because I saw that everybody had it at number eleven. 
Um, I was like, this is going to be crazy. I'm Where's Z hat? I'm out by this guy. You know what I mean? Anyway. <laughs> hey, Roy, real quick. How many leagues are there? <laughs> you know. 37. Definitely, definitely 300. Yeah, let's definitely. Just drop a pack of uh, toothpicks. <laughs> anyway, Dude Imperium's awesome. Like, for all the reasons everybody said, people really enjoy it. I really enjoy it myself. I really enjoy the IP, and the movie has made it even better. And, I mean, it's just that worker placement like trying to figure it out and the angst of like don't take my space it really is important in this mm -hmm. game oh, yeah. where it's like those spaces that give you units in combat because so many of the points you can get from combat either combat or getting the alliances it's like if they take that the, the, I can only go to one mm -hmm. space let me put people in combat if mm -hmm. they take that one space I'm not going to be in this round I got to completely rethink my strategy and nobody takes it and you're you know there's all these interesting things it's like which round do I want to win combat in combat can be punishing if you're not able to win it but now with the expansion with dreadnoughts added in right. there it's like even if I lose I can go back in there's a ton of great things every crazy. year crazy. every year there's a couple games yeah that go on to be remembered. Yeah. Unfortunately, I mean, we all have obscure games on our list. Right, we right, do. Sure. Uh, but there are some games, and this will be one of those games. Yeah. Uh, from from it was 2020. Yeah, yeah 2020. Right. This will be a game people will this, this will, will probably be, slide. This will be, but it'll be on the list for a long time. This is like a new generational um, Battlestar Galactica. Mm. You know what's interesting too? It's based I wonder, on an IP, which is rare for a game to kind of just yeah. blow up like that. This game also, fairly or not, uh, that's another uh, discussion, gets paired up and lumped with another game consistently. And I wonder if that's going to continue to happen. Because I think that other game, and you know who I'm talking about. We're talking about, about Arnak. I don't know right. why we're not... Shh. You're ruining it. <laughs> Doing. Those two games get, get tied in together. I wonder, I think that one's going to be a similar one that gets, you know, is going to have long legs too. I, I agree, yes. So I think I think Dire Wolf knocked it out of the park. I prefer Dune one, so. to Arnak. Just put it out there. But they're both fine games. Actually, this is better than fine. Arnak is good. Keep Folks, this only gets better tomorrow. Mm. The top Woo! 10 of all time. But maybe there'll be a four way crossover on the same number tomorrow. There will not. <laughs> Way, way to burst that bubble quick, Tom. No, because I know some of my top ten are not on any of yours. Mm. Um, we're in uh, 25 minutes. We're seeing Meadow played live right here, so come back and uh, watch that. Ooh. And um, then tomorrow, we got three things going on. The top ten of all time at noon. Then at 2, we're doing a premiere where we'll come online and talk to you all while we watch a, a video Chris put together of us playing... Um, Kingdom Death Monster, mm -hmm. and then at yeah. eight, Insanity. As we do the countdown to the Kickstarter. <laughs> Did you know we're running a Kickstarter? DiceHourKickstarter.com. Only a few hours left. Not, I mean, I guess only 30, a few 30, decades of hours sure, left. Or, I don't know, a score left. of hours. Yeah. Whatever. Getting it was hours. Getting close. You guys are all amazing. Thank you, everybody. Thank you for Chris for running this yes. and Camille for doing the the, the, the notes. And um, until next time, I'm Tom Vassell. I'm Roy Kennedy. I'm Mike Delicio. I'm Z Garcia. Have fun in the desert. <laughs>